This is KGW News at Sunrise. And new this morning, demonstrators were back in downtown Portland last night, marching to a spot that has seen so many protests over the last few months. That group marched from the South Park blocks to the Justice Center and Central Precinct in downtown Portland. Portland police say some people broke windows of businesses along the way. Now, they didn't make any arrests, and they are investigating those incidents. But they say this was one of the calmer crowds we've seen outside the Justice Center. Police really only had to interact with the crowd once, and that was to clear the street to allow for a shift change at the central precinct. Police did not declare an unlawful assembly or a riot. Earlier in the day, a group gathered to show support for Portland police officers with a back the blue rally outside the East Precinct. Supporters waved American flags and held signs reading We Heart PPB and Blue Lives Matter. I, I hope that we're the quiet majority that support the police and support what they do. And we aren't going to have peace without police. And that the whole notion that we can reduce a police force that's already understaffed is not going to give us good results for Portland. Supporters also hung heart-shaped signs with words of encouragement outside the East Precinct. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us here on this Sunday morning. I'm Galen Etlin. Now crews are continuing to make some progress on wildfires burning across the state. The recent rain helped improve visibility and give firefighters an edge. But of course that rain was not enough to put the fires out. The Office of Emergency Management says statewide at least nine people have died so far in the fires and about a million acres have burned so far. So here's where things stand now with three of the largest fires spanning several counties in western Oregon. The Lion's Head fire has burned more than 198,000 acres. It's only 10% contained. The Beachy Creek fire has burned more than 192,000 acres with 20% containment. And the Riverside fire has burned close to 138,000 acres. It's 11% contained. Well, it is cloudy out there this morning, but the air quality is certainly much better across the area compared to earlier this week. Keely Chalmers joins us now, and Keely, it was nice to see some blue sky yesterday as well. Yeah, good morning. We are getting clear skies, some sunshine today. Things are looking much better. Taking a look outside right now, this is our Wells Fargo sky cam. And we do have some fog in some areas, but it really is quite a pleasant morning out there. We're at 59 degrees, winds are calm, and we're going to continue with the calm wind theme as we had not only throughout the day today, but uh, for much of the week. Visibility out there pretty decent, 8 miles in Aurora, but we are seeing some fog in some areas, especially out on the coast where we have visibility down to a mile in Newport and pretty low visibility down in Eugene as well. Hey, the big story, as it has been over the last couple of days, is the air quality. Those green dots represent good air quality. You see a lot of green dots out there, especially here in the metro area. We are going to have a good air quality day. Sun and clouds today. That continues through Tuesday, which is, by the way, the first day of fall. And as fall returns, so does the rain. That moves in on Wednesday. We'll take a look about at about how much rain we can expect coming up in your full forecast. All right, Keely, thank you so much. Now, this is an amazing story. When the Riverside fire broke out last week, neighbors fought to save their own community. Christelle Kumwe takes us to Mulala, sharing the story of an incredible group with a memorable nickname. A community in Mulala can now get some sleep. A typical day up here would start about 4 a.m. Because these volunteers stay awake. Well, the first couple days, there was no sleep for anybody around here. When the fast approaching Riverside fire prompted a level three go now evacuation, they quickly moved their loved ones to safety. There was a, a group of guys that said, no, there's still family, uh, family property that we got to protect. And at that point, there was no other support. At the time, resources were deployed to other places. We weren't going to sit around and watch our everything our ancestors have done up here just burn to the ground. So. We just attacked it head on. A grassroots movement of neighbors and family members came together. And then the donations and the equipment and the local landowners and loggers uh, just started showing up. They had close to 80 volunteers help out on these hills outside of Molala. And we were punching fire lines. People were doing it by hand with equipment, whatever it came down to, and where they, they would go out and scout out to see where it needed to be so it wouldn't come back down the valley and take out all the homes and lands. Most of the volunteers were born and raised on these hills. 
They have an intimate knowledge of the roads. It was paramount to have that knowledge of how these roads connect, how the topography of the ground comes together in order to get fire lines cut where we needed them, send the resources where we needed them. They believe they saved hundreds of homes. The community is thankful for their work. Shows of gratitude can be seen around town. We're just good people that were doing what we needed to do in a time of need. It's not a surprise. You know, these are guys that I played with in the mud. These are kids that I played with football with. Those guys over there were my mentors in life. They've been referred to as the Hillbilly Brigade or the Malala Militia. They are though reluctant to be called heroes. It's a solid group of people and I would just encourage everybody Take the opportunity to know your community. The Department of Forestry has taken over operation, but the group says they are monitoring the area and are ready to step in if need be. In Molala, Christelle Kumwe, KGW News. Very interesting story. Now we do have a sad update here this morning. The Marion County Sheriff's Office believes the remains of conservationist George Atia have been found on his property in the Opal Creek Wilderness. Atia's home burned and no one has heard from him since. He's the only person still labeled missing in Marion County after the wildfires. The medical examiner is working to identify those remains. Now, as hundreds of thousands of acres burn in Oregon, state parks are working to assess the damage. But this morning, staff count themselves lucky. It has been an interesting year, to say the least. Joe Niehaus with Oregon Parks and Recreation says wildfires are just the latest challenge. Some charring and some structural damage from the wildfires. More than 20 parks remain closed following windstorms that knocked down trees more than a week ago. Wildfires then spread hundreds of thousands of acres across Oregon. But the parks were lucky. I saw that about 900 acres were affected by wildfires within the park system, which is kind of a miracle, it sounds like. Yes, we're very, very grateful and thankful for the firefighters and the first responders. We have incredible volunteers in the community statewide, as well as our staff. So without them, we really would have had more damage. The most damage is at Collier Memorial State Park, where a cabin burned down and a museum was burned. Fire also burned through a campground on the North Santiam River. It's going to be a difficult time for a, a long time, I'm afraid. And takes us somewhere in Oregon. Grant McComey showcases the best of Oregon's landscapes for KGW. He's taken us to places like Detroit Lake, which did suffer some damage in the fire, but for the most part remains intact. Grant is now worried, though, for the state park system, already struggling from cuts under COVID-19. But they don't have the staffing. They don't have the crews. A disaster like this really shows how delicate some of those landscapes are. What is your message for people watching for how they can be, be, be better stewards of the land? Really need to take stock of, of what we have here, the diversity of what we have here within a two hour range to be able to reach so many varied ecosystems. It, it'll come back, it always comes back, but it's gonna require time. The Park Service has a live map online showing closures. Some parks to the north are even serving as Red Cross evacuation sites for people displaced. We are lucky, very much so. And from staff like Joe Niehaus, a message of community. How can people help you guys out right now? People could be patient with us, respect the closures, and making sure that the roadways are clear for emergency responders as well as our staff. And when people are visiting our open parks to remember that COVID is still a challenge that we're dealing with. A reminder of distance, but also resilience through more than one disaster. We've got more information for you on KGW.com about that as well. Now, some local students who are deaf were already going through distance learning challenges, and now they're dealing with the wildfires too. So coming up next, why their families and teachers say they're still grateful through it all.